here presenting a case of a pure ovarian choriocarcinoma, an aggressive and rare entity. The lifetime risk of a woman developing ovarian cancer is approximately 1 in 70 in US. Approximately 23% of gynecological cancers are ovarian in origin, but 47% of all deaths from cancer of female genital tract occur in women with ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer was estimated to be the third most common cancer among Indian women and eight overall as per Globocon 2018 fact sheet, constituting 3.44% are the germ cell tumors. The varietal cancer include the serous carcinomas, the clear cell carcinomas, endometrioid, and the mucinous. Are you hearing me? Or there's some problem in the net? Hello? Yes, Dr. Shivani. It was disconnected in between, I think. No, we could able to see your screen. Okay, okay. It's not okay. coming. Okay. So, uh, the ovarian sex called stomal tumors are the fibroma, fecoma, fibrosarcoma, latex cell tumor, steroid cell tumor, and the sclerosing stomal tumors. The sex called tumors are the adult granulosa cell tumor, the Sertoli cell tumors and the sex cord stromal tumors. The ovarian germ cell tumors are the Koye carcinomas, the dysgeminomas, immature teratomas, and the mixed germ cell tumors. It's not. Working. I'm not able to forward this. Uh, so uh, you cannot able to move on to the next slide, am I right? Yeah. Okay, so in that case, uh, could you please share us your presentation and uh, we can uh, share on your behalf. You could email us your presentation, doctor. It's coming now. Okay, okay. okay. It's working fine now. Yeah, it's not. The malignant tumors of the ovary occur at all ages with variation histologic type by age. For example, in women younger than 20 years of age, germ cell tumors predominate, while borderline tumors typically occur in women in 30s and 40s. Now we can see the germ cell tumors are composed of different tumor types derived from the primitive germ cells of the embryonic gonad. Uh, there are two types, the primitive germ cells that has not acquired the potential for further differentiation. They uh, constitute the seminoma and disgeminoma. The others are the totipotent germ cells, which differentiate into embryonal carcinoma, that are the teratomas, and the extraembryonic structures that constitute the yolk cell tumor and the core carcinoma by differentiating towards the trophoblast. Now, the pure ovarian core carcinomas are extremely rare malignancies that arise from either gestational tissue in ovary or from, from pure germ cells of the ovary. On the basis of origin, they are classified as the gestational ovarian core carcinomas and the non-gestational ones. The reported incidence of gestational core carcinoma is 1 in 369 million pregnancies, while for non-gestational, it is less than 0.6% of the ovarian germ cell tumors. Both the variants are seen in young women of reproductive age group. A patient who is sexually immature, unable to conceive, or who has not engaged in sexual intercourse must have non-gestational chorea carcinoma. The predominant presenting symptom is lower abdominal pain. Common complaints include atypical genital bleeding, amenorrhea, nausea, and vomiting. post women who have been sexually active or have been ever pregnant, gestational origin is a strong possibility. 
is often diagnosed by the finding of an elevated HCG level in association with metastatic lesion detected radiographically. The levels of serum or urine beta HCG are good tumor marker for the progression or the remission of disease. The two variants cannot be differentiated clinically or histopathologically. DNA polymorphism analysis is a useful modality to differentiate between the two for therapeutic and prognostic purposes. Presence of paternal DNA goes in favor of gestational choriocarcinoma. The treatment of pure ovarian choriocarcinomas essentially comprises of cytoreductive surgery and adjuvant chemotherapy. Here I present a case of pure ovarian choriocarcinoma, likely of the gestational origin. A 30-year-old female, Gravida 4, Para 1, Life 0, A2, was admitted to BPS Government Medical College, Kanpur, Sonipat, Haryana, India, on April 30, 2020, with complaint of amenorrhea of two and a half months, pain lower abdomen, and multiple episodes of bleeding per vaginum for the last six days. She had an episode of syncopal attack on the day of admission. An examination, her pulse rate was 68 per minute, blood pressure 100 by 60 millimeter of mercury, Respiratory rate 14 per minute, SpO to 99% on room air. Her pelvic examination revealed pulled up cervix, normal size uterus, a tender mass of around 8 to 10 cm in right fornix, and fullness with tenderness in left, left fornix. Her urine pregnancy test was negative, and all other hematological investigations were normal. Sonography revealed a normal size uterus with a large heterogeneous solid cystic mass. Lesion of size 18 to 8 cm arising from right ovary with bulky left ovary with the probable diagnosis of right egg nexal ectopic pregnancy. Serum beta HCG was sent for the patient in spite of negative UPT. Her serum beta HCG levels came out to be more than 5 lakh million international units per ml and MRI pelvis was planned. With a provisional diagnosis of right molar ectopic pregnancy, laparotomy was performed after written informed consent. Intraoperatively, a 10 to 10 centimeter lobulated hemorrhagic ovarian mass was present on right side with right hematocelpings attached to a rudimentary horn. On left side, a 6 into 6 centimeter lobulated hemorrhagic ovarian mass was seen with swollen fallopian tube as shown in the figure. Oh, there you go. The figure is not coming. Approximately 300 cc of peritoneum was noted and all the other abdominal and pelvic viscera were normal on examination. A right selping ophorectomy was done with horn excision and a mental biopsy was taken. It's a microscopic picture showing sheets of tumor cells along with areas of hemorrhagic and a rib of normal ovarian parenchyma. And the deep part shows a part of the corpus luteal cyst. A specimen from omentum revealed presence of tumor cells and three lymph nodes present in omentum were found to be from tumor. Hence, the final diagnosis of the A2 choriocarcinoma ovary was made and patient was planned for multi-agent chemotherapy. Post-operatively, day 7, beta HCG titer decreased to 15,000 million international unit per ml. Chemotherapy was planned for her. Due to financial and technical constraints, she was referred to medical oncologist to a higher center. The chemotherapy options are that the gestational choriocarcinoma is treated with methotrexate-based chemotherapy. It is methotrexate, etoposide, and actinomycin D. It can be uh, EMACO, that is methotrexate, etoposide, actinomycin D, cyclophosphamide, and vincristin. The EPEMA, that is etoposide, is platin, methotrexate, and actinomycin D. The non-gestational ones are generally treated with bleomycin, etoposide, and cisplatin regimen. The germ cell tumors of the ovary are treated with total abdominal hysterectomy and bilateral cell pingo A complete staging operation is indispensable for the management and prognostication in young patients. Uh, stage 1 germ cell tumors can be treated with conservative surgery, that is unilateral oophorectomy or cell pingo Uh, pure ovarian carcinoma is a rare and aggressive tumor arising from the gestational tissue of the ovary. The etiology has been ascribed to four different sources, from maternal germ cells, from ovarian pregnancy, from metastasis from a regressed or occult uterine primary, or an infant from metastasis from the placenta. 
In our case, the origin was from ovarian pregnancy, probably. The literature review showed in the first case of non gestational was reported in 1985 and gestational in 1996. Nanji et al. published their paper in 2017 and summarized 48 cases, including their own. And the incidence of gestational choroid carcinoma is 1 in 369 million pregnancies. In our institute, Established in September 2011, the delivery rate is approximately 5,000 deliveries per year, and it is the first case reported, approximating to 1 in 45,000 deliveries. The patients usually present with non-specific symptoms like acute abdomen and amenorrhea, which can mimic other common conditions in young women like hemorrhagic ovarian cyst, tubo ovarian abscess, ovarian torsion, and ectopic pregnancy. Our patient presented in the third decade of life, married and paris female with no live issue, with two and a half months of amenorrhea and very high levels of serum beta HCG with negative UPT. The reason for negative UPT is that when too much of HCG is present in a sample, the antibodies may fail to bind as they are saturated and test appears out to be negative. The presence of normal sized uterus with an adexal mass and increased serum beta HCG levels, along with radiographic findings, pointed towards a probable diagnosis of right molar ectopic pregnancy. As a patient was a Paris female with no live issue, fertility preserving surgery, that is, right selvagophorectomy with a mental biopsy, was performed with due consent. On histopathological examination, it was found to be ovarian choriocarcinoma with presence of a corpus luteal cyst. The history of amenorrhea with sexual intercourse, very high serum beta HCG levels, presence of choriocarcinoma with presence of corpus luteal cyst in histopathology directed towards the presence of gestational carcinoma, but it is the DNA polymorphism and presence of paternal DNA in tumor that finally clinches the diagnosis. Since DNA polymorphism analysis is an expensive and rarely available technique we were unable to carry out in our patient, the differentiation of the two variants is important as the gestational type has a better prognostic outcome than the non-gestational one. The combination of cytoreductive surgery along with chemotherapy is the standard treatment. Despite thorough research, the, uh, there was found to be no association between the occurrence of ovarian choriocarcinoma and uterine anomalies. The patient's serum beta HCG levels decreased rapidly after surgery and planned for multi-agent chemotherapy. So uh, it's a comparison with the other one. Like in our present case, uh, the type is not as specified. Uh, it is in the year 2020. We did the surgery of uh, selvangioferectomy with a mental biopsy. And for chemotherapy, it was referred due to some technical constraints. Uh, in 2022, the Shizuka at L, um, the type was gestational. In it, the left selvangioferectomy with right ovarian biopsy was done and imeco chemotherapy was given. The third is the again the gestational done by Nangia et al. in 2003. In it, the ovarian cystectomy with right ovarian biopsy was done and the chemotherapy EPMA was given. Lorigan et al. gestational one, it was the first and it is the it was done in 1996. Total abdominal hysterectomy and bilateral selvangioferectomy was done followed by the chemotherapy of BEP, then EI. The Wang et al., the, it was non-gestational, done in 2016, and it, the total abdominal hysterectomy, selvangioferectomy, and debulking surgery was done, followed by the chemotherapy of PVB. The last one, the done by Pedro et al., non-gestational, in 2013, in this, the pelvic mass biopsy, then chemotherapy, then THBS was done, and the chemo was, uh, um, so to conclude, I would like to say that ovarian choriocarcinoma is a very rare and aggressive tumor. In a female presenting with an axial mass with very high serum beta HCG levels, along with absent intrauterine trophoblastic disease, the possibility of ovarian choriocarcinoma should be kept in mind as early diagnosis and treatment plays a major role in enhancing patient's prognosis and advances in chemotherapy has improved the survival rate. Actually, there are some pictures which are not coming, the MRI pics and the PEROP pics. Uh, I have uh, sent in, the, in my presentation, but I'm unable to show them here. Uh, otherwise, it's complete now. 